Art Rocks is made possible by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and by viewers like you. Hello, I'm James Fox Smith, publisher of Country Roads Magazine, and you are our guest for this edition of Art Rocks. I'd like you to meet the renowned Lafayette-based photographer Philip Gould. Though he was born in Massachusetts and raised in the Bay Area, since the 70s Gould has focused on capturing the unique landscapes and the cultures of Louisiana in photographs that capture its intimacy and its power. For his latest project though, Philip has widened his focus, documenting the country's connective tissues in a new, unique book named Bridging the Mississippi. Philip, for this project you set out to document all the Mississippi River bridges between right. Minnesota and South Louisiana. That's quite the travelogue. Tell us about how you put it together. The main thing that had to happen is I had to discover the subject. Down here, the bridges are beautiful. I was traveling with Robert Dafford, the famous artist. We're going up to Kentucky, and it was late at night. We're traveling, cutting across the southern tip of Illinois, going into Paducah. And it was like 15 degrees outside, and we crossed the two bridges, the Mississippi River bridges, at the southern tip. Mississippi and Ohio, and I looked up and I saw these truck lights, these headlights beaming, just ricocheting off the bridge. The air had an Ill iciness to it and, and almost a mist, frozen mist. And I said, that's amazing. Did I stop and take a picture? No, I thought hard about it. It was cold, it was late, and we had to get to Paducah. And that decision haunted me to the point where I said, you know, maybe this is a very interesting project. If this bridge was so interesting, what about all the rest of them along the river? And so that led to me uh, doing a lot of research, learning about the bridges, and just starting out. I knew Louisiana bridges, obviously, traveled over many of them, and just worked my way north. Uh, the first trip I took all the way up to Lake Itasca and photographed along the way. And once the project started, it had its own momentum. What kind of time frame are we talking about? From start uh, About two to years. Okay. Two okay. years. I did a trip in the summer, I did a trip in the fall, and I did a trip in the winter. Because mm -hmm. you can't photograph the Mississippi River unless you include it being very frozen. You really tied together the whole of the American climate map, sure. really, with the winter. Absolutely. Don't you? Yeah. yeah. You I see mean, it it's in essential. all its seasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the river and bridges look very different in the dead of winter. There are so many different styles and vintages of the bridges that I thought was an amazing collection. If you think of it that way, as a portrayal of American bridges and mm. our bridge architecture. So some of the oldest bridges still in use on a day-to-day -day basis, how old are we talking there? The oldest bridge right now is the Eads Bridge, opened in 1874 in St. Louis. That's an amazing bridge. It's on the cover, actually, mm -hmm. of the book. There's an amazing story to that bridge. James B. Eads, who was a man in St. Louis who could do no wrong, had an amazing history before building the Eads Bridge. Incidentally, he never went to engineering school. He never built a bridge, but people in St. Louis had such confidence in him that they hired him to do it anyway, and he got the team together. It's a very interesting convergence because the mid-19th century, you had the railroads coming up. You had the riverboats having within a total lock politically and economically on the rivers. You had this need for westward expansion. We have to get across, we have to get trains across the river. And the problem was that the technology did not exist. They could do iron, but they, that's it. And iron was not strong enough to support trains. East was aware of very new steel technology and he sold the city on doing this with steel. An extraordinary. And it's the first bridge built with steel on a large scale and it's still standing. And if you look at it close up, it's just amazing. All the intricate pieces and everything like that. It's, it's, it's just a sight to behold. I love the bridge. It's just a treat to be yeah. there, to see it, 
to stand on it, to look under it. Yeah. That's incredible. As I understand, you were explaining some of the earliest bridges spanning the river were built for trains, and that is that westward expansion we're talking right, about. Right, right. Well, there was a bridge in Minneapolis, 1854, I believe, that was um, a pedestrian and horse buggy bridge, uh, but it was not a big, the river was not very wide there, so they could do that pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Starting with the expansion of the railroad, they had to get the bridges built and built strong. There's a great story, right, of Abraham Lincoln's uh, legal efforts to ensure that we were able to cross the river on bridges. Can you fill us in on that? Uh, 1856, the first railroad bridge across the Mississippi River at what is now Davenport, Iowa, was opened. And two weeks afterwards, after it opened, a riverboat, the Effie Afton, sailed up underneath the bridge, lost power, floated back, hit the bridge, um, it, uh, and a fire ensued with the boat and the bridge. The boat sank, the bridge was severely damaged, and the riverboat owner sued the railroad because the, they, they claimed that the bridge was an, a dangerous obstruction to river commerce. The railroad included in their legal team Abraham Lincoln, and Abraham Lincoln had already a pretty good political touch, just speaking in common parlance and clear, clean logic. One could say he was the one who made the case for the railroad, basically saying that people have as much right to cross on a bridge as they do to safely sail under a bridge. Extraordinary. And the case did not get fully decided until Lincoln was president by the Supreme Court the riverboat people tried and tried again, they finally just gave up and so, yeah, yeah. so there's this always, this one guy, uh, one engineer um, described it as a long, delicate dance between riverboats and bridges. And uh, he said, we have no choice. We're on the floor together and we just have to be careful. The march of progress. Now you photographed 75 of the more than 130 bridges that span roughly the Mississippi, right? I could go through and count them, but roughly right. 75, yeah. Right. Well tell me about, is there a particular favorite that stands out? That's hard because there's so many favorites. From the Louisiana perspective, I really enjoy photographing the Huey Long Bridge, especially the new expanded Huey Long Bridge. It's an amazing structure and it's an amazing engineering project to be able to do what they did. Um, and the, the thing that was the most important is they maintained the profile of the bridge. And that was important. The bridge in Lansing, Iowa, it's called the Black Hawk Bridge, also an amazing time warp structure and just architecturally, engineering wise, pretty impressive. Philip Gould, the book is Bridging the Mississippi. Thank you so very much for Thank sharing you. some of your stories with me. You're welcome. Thank you so much.